Oh, folks, it is FA Cup first qualifying round today, and our winner takes on series has led us to kind of a local derby. We obviously saw Southall FC win in the last round away against Bearstead and progress through to this round of the competition, but they're not actually playing in Southall at the moment. They're playing here at Burnham FC. Burnham FC is about five miles down the road from Beaconsfield Town, who Southall play in this round. So that's Burnham's ground. We're going in there to see Southall versus Beaconsfield. It's the first qualifying round. That's four steps away from the first round proper of this season's FA Cup. And as ever, we're playing winner stays on rules. So regardless of who wins today, there's a very good chance I'm going to be back around this area again in two weeks time. But let's go in and have a look around, shall we? And I tell you what, this is a very nice looking little setup. So we've got a little bar through there, what looks like a stand of some sorts there. Certainly the highest structure we've encountered in this year's competition so far. And then a couple of turnstiles we can just see through to the pitch there. It is the most expensive ticket we've had to buy this season. It's £10 to get in, cash only on the turnstile. Southall do play in tier eight which is two promotions below the National League, North and South, and Beaconsfield, who they're playing one step above. So once again, and it seems to be becoming a little bit of a theme for this series so far, the away team are the favourites, and I am starting to turn into a little bit of a curse, but maybe that all changes today. But I need to find a crisp £10 note to make it through that door over there. Well, we are in, and this looks very snazzy. So we've got the... Uh, Got the stand down there, which definitely is the highest number of seats we've seen in this year's uh, competition so far, which I guess is going to be something of a recurring theme from this point onwards. I'm also very impressed that there's an ice cream kiosk. If we spin around a little bit further this way, it's very much uh, typical non-league stuff where you've got the facilities all on one side and then uh, on the other sides you've just got... The, uh, the fence surrounding the pitch, which is absolutely fine because it gives me space to wander around and do my own thing. I think we are, I mean, I say I think, I'm no football expert, but that looks like a, uh, a 4G pitch to me. Um, certainly some kind of synthetic setup, which um, when, I've been on, when I've been anywhere near these before, I know I get yelled at for going anywhere near them with uh, non fancy boots on but um, it does mean we've got a little bit of separation between the pitch and then the surrounding areas and then we've got a little bit of undercover sheltered area over that end as well and then that brings us back round to this side thankfully the weather is forecast to be good so shouldn't need to go and dive for cover over there and uh, yeah this is this is all right isn't it very snazzy and also something else I've got to show you as well I'm just gonna just going to skulk over this way. You don't see very many of these these days. We have a home shirt with Sir Mick Powell on the back, which I am very happy to see. So we're doing the now traditional pre-match lap to have a proper little look around. Also, having spoken to some locals, I've already learned that I've been making the same mistake I was making in the previous round when I was calling at Beerstead, Bearstead. I've already said Beaconsfield in this video, and apparently it's Beaconsfield. People of the South, just say names the way, say place names the way they're spelt, and it would make my life an awful lot easier. But yeah, we're, we've made it over into this nice shady corner, which based on how hot and sunny it is at the moment, I'm thinking this is a lovely little spot to potentially watch the match from. We also get a nice view of the rest of the facilities without the sun blinding into my eyes. Similar to what we did in the last round, let's have a count the chairs competition. Everyone knows chairs are the, uh, the, the descriptor of wealth. So we'll find out how well off this football club is based on how many seats they've got. Although, A, that was quite far out for the camera to focus and you might not pick it up properly. And B, when we did this in the last round, we got about five different versions. I never did count them myself, but 
we didn't get a conclusive number, despite the chairs all being on screen at the same time. So the chances of us getting a number are probably fairly slim, but uh, they're there. Get counting. Let me know down in the comments section. It's all good for the YouTube engagement. We've also got a few more comfortable looking chairs over this side in what I guess is supposed to be a terrace. That has a few, uh, a few padded chairs in it, which is very nice. And then, as with most football grounds, just a pile of old gas bottles there. What else do you expect to be behind the dugout? If not a pile of old gas bottles. So we've got the dugouts here. There you go, I'm gonna extend my pole so we can have a proper nose into the dugouts. So there's one. And there's the other one. That's the kind of shot you're here for, I'm sure. And we also see by doing that, so we are now dead on the halfway line. And you can see that the stand over that side is absolutely not central it's not symmetrical across the pitch it, it does make me wonder what else goes on here because it's quite a, it's quite a big building for a uh, for a non-league football team goes up quite high as we saw on the way in and it seems like the the seats on the side of it are almost like a little bit of an afterthought so i suspect there's some kind of gym or fitness thing going on in there. I can't imagine that whole building is being used just for Burnham Football Club. Because that seems very confusing if it is. My reputation is starting to spread before me. I've just walked past the, uh, the Southall players warming up and a couple of them have said hello. Had a handshake from uh, what I'm gonna assume is the manager. He's certainly the guy leading the warm up. So hello to all of you watching. We're just wandering around the back of the goal here now to have a look from this end again all very snazzy and then we will uh, complete our loop up here they've even got big nets behind there so you don't have to climb over the wall to fetch the ball which you would think would be a standard thing but i've been to quite a lot of non-league football grounds now and you'd be surprised how uh, how many of them don't have anything like that to stop the balls getting lost? And I'm always in fear for my car. Here, I think my car is actually, I think it is actually behind the goal at that end. Hello. <laughs> there you go, see? The players are all expecting it now. <laughs> That's awesome. There you go, so just a little bit of a look of the, uh, the warm up going on from this end. Lovely, lovely, lovely. There we go. I did warn you before that I'm no football pitch expert and it turns out it's not a 4G pitch, it's a 3G pitch. That led to a little bit of frantic Googling where I was just checking 4G pitches do exist and I wasn't confusing football pitches with mobile phone signals. But it turns out there are 2G, 3G and 4G pitches. I, of course, have no idea what the difference between any of them is, but this is a 3G pitch. It says so on the sign over there. And here we have the, uh, the other warm-up going on at this end. See, them lot have no idea who I am. That's why winner stays on is so, is so much fun. I grow attached to the team that I come through with in the previous round. It's good. So are we ready for story time with your old pal Kev? Because I was intrigued about why Southall were playing not in Southall. So I'm on Wikipedia, I'm having a little bit of a look and they've actually been playing matches away from their own ground since 1992. That is more than 30 years without a home. Now, I can't get accurate information out of Wikipedia for exactly when they've played where. I know last year they were playing at Stanwell, um, sharing with Ashford Town, but it also says on Wikipedia, as recently as five years ago, they were playing here. So I think they've played here for quite a long time and then moved away from here for a bit. It doesn't explain why. And now they're back here for this season. They are trying to, uh, I'm going to read directly from Wikipedia for you. The club is proposing a community health and wellbeing centre to be incorporated into a new stadium as a hub for sports projects and educational use which would be really, really cool. Um, so basically, Southall are trying to get back home after over 30 years. So that'll be nice, won't it? They're not, they're not back home yet, though. This is still quite far away from traditional home. But we've, disco we've discovered a little story that if Wikipedia wasn't useless, I'd be able to give you a little bit more background on. I'm sure there'll be people down in the comment section who can tell me all of the detailed background. And that's what the comment section is for. 
pre-match beverage from the ice cream kiosk, £1.50 for a can of Diet Coke. Um, one thing I've not seen anywhere is any kind of club shop, which I wasn't really expecting club shops at this level of football anyway, but it was the fact that we had a club shop in the last round. It just made me hopeful that they might actually be more of a thing in non-league football than I thought. But alas, tis not the case. I do have a programme though for half time. So get yourselves ready. We've got programme facts coming up at half time again. It is a very warm day and my camera does not like very warm days and keeps shutting itself off. So I've come to the, uh, the under the shelter bit, which conveniently is opposite the tunnel, which as we saw before, is a little bit off centre, but the tunnel is over there. We are four minutes before kickoff, so at any moment now, we should see players emerge. I mean, there's already several already out here, because I guess unless you started, you don't bother going in to the changing rooms. There we go, we are underway. First qualifying round of this season's FA Cup. Right, there's a very early corner. It was a missed header from the, uh, the Southall defender. And it was a pretty decent chance. Beaconsfield were through on goal. Good save from the Southall keeper. And he's had another good save there. And uh, first quarter, we were only about a minute and a half in. So that's been a uh, pretty scary start. Still only 10 minutes in for the second time Beaconsfield has just been through one on one with the goalkeeper. This time they absolutely scuffed it. But uh, it's either going to be an absolute mauling today if they start taking these chances or Southall are just going to ride their luck all afternoon and uh, pull off an unexpected win. But they are struggling a little bit at the moment. Don't want to alarm anybody. There's a dog over there. He's not been on the pitch yet, so we shouldn't get a dog poo break. But there is a dog here. It's 1-0. I didn't get a proper look at it because I was watching from here. <laughs> well, I have a post in my way. I saw, saw the, uh, the net bulge, but didn't actually see the shot itself. But uh, yeah, it's 1-0 to Southall. Happy days. I need to shuffle up and down along this touchline a little better to make sure that I don't get my view blocked the next time there's a goal. But uh, yeah, look, if I'd have stood here, it would have been a beauty. Did we, uh, did we see that? What actually happened? Ball across the six-yard box and he just got in front of his man and put it into the... There we go. Simple stuff. Lovely. Stoop. Stupid post <laughs> that got in my way. Um, this is why I should stand behind the goal, but it's uh, it's lovely and shady here. I like it. There you go. I'm properly positioned this time. It's a Southall corner. Good move. The uh, I think it was the number nine on the far side intercepted a sloppy ball from Beaconsfield and uh, slid it across goal, and then it was a bit scuffed. Went up in the air. Ended up going behind for this corner, but we're going to go we'll have a second goal here i sense a 2-0 coming in because i'm filming and i haven't yet managed to film a goal in this series so this feels like my moment not quite the hunt for a goal before we're not allowed to show them continues we've got maybe three minutes left in this first half another dangerous attacking situation for southall they've got a three kick there the ball over the top and the number seven has been just as dangerous as the nine. Those two are causing all, all kinds of problems. Um, it was just pulled back, just dragged back by the defender. Yellow card for the defender and now attacking free kick in a very dangerous position as Southall looked to go 2 0 up before half time and it would be completely deserved as well. Certainly since the goal, they've been comfortably the better team. Beaconsfield had those couple of early big chances, but since then it's been all Southall and they would be very good value for a second goal if they can grab one here. Probably a bit far out to be shooting. Well, there we are, half time, 1-0 to Southall, very much deserved, especially based on how well they were playing towards the end of that half. If anything, they should probably feel a little bit hard done by that it's not 2-0. Hopefully, that's not going to come to cost them in the second half. I'd be surprised if the team from the higher level can be outplayed that successfully throughout another 45 minutes, but we shall see. But we won't see until after we do some programme facts. So here we have our lovely looking programme. Um, straight away, this just feels like a, a proper old school programme. I like the way the printing's not lined up properly on the front of it, but we go straight in with our history of Southall and uh, the honours. So they won the London League Division One in 1905. 
Bet you didn't know that until now. So there's there's a club fact for you. Their highest ever attendance is nearly 20,000 people, 19,094 people for an FA Cup third round proper against Watford. In uh, That was in 1936. If they can have a run through to the third round of the FA Cup this year, I'll personally drive 19,095 people to make sure that record is broken because that would be absolutely sensational. Um, Oh, <laughs> um, I don't even understand the section, but the first article in here is called From the Horse's Mouth, and then there's a picture of a horse. I don't know the relevance of the horse, but I'm very, very happy about it. Um, we've got match reports of previous rounds, lovely league tables and statistics and things. We love a league table, so we can see that um, Southall are currently 12th in the pitching in Isthmian League South Central Division after three games. Beaconsfield are 20th in the Southern League Premier South and haven't won a game yet this season. So although they're from the tier above, they haven't yet won a match. Although I guess they've won their previous match in the FA Cup to get through to this round. Unless they're at a level where they come in at this round. I'm not quite sure where they enter. Um, but there are a couple of notable names in the uh, in the Beaconsfield team, they've got Sam Besant, son of Dave Besant, um, who is now 35 years old. When you've got a 35 year old goalkeeper, and I remember his dad playing, that's problematic. Also, they've got a former cobbler in the shape of Sam Togwell, who we uh, we will continue to boo throughout the rest of the match. Josh Payne is a name that I recognise as well. I feel like he's someone who's been around and about the uh, the football league at various points. I don't remember where from, but he's there and I recognise the name for sure um, our history of Beaconsfield this is a really lovely programme a section about the not from the non-league paper and this proper old school classic programme stuff which I absolutely love and then it just goes on and on it's not just full of adverts like some of the other ones we've seen, they've got stories of their previous FA Cup runs on this day in history, going back six years ago, 95 years. I mean, this is a great program. It really is. This is, uh, they've got the squad stats for this season so far. And then a few adverts at the end of it. For two quid, that is a 10 out of 10 program. Officially, best program I've had on this season's FA Cup run so far. Big thumbs up for Southall. I've just had a tip off that although there's no club shop, there is a little club shop table over by the turnstile that's got a few bits and bobs on it. So we're going over to have a little look. This has been a cash only experience so far, both to get in and to buy my can of Coke. So I am gonna be limited. I assume they're not gonna take card at their table. I think I've got about six pounds in cash. <laughs> Let's go and see if we can get anything for six pounds. There you go, in case I didn't find them properly earlier in the video, there is Team News. And here we have stuff. We like stuff. As I suspected, cash only, so I couldn't add to my baseball cap collection that apparently I started at Bearstead, but I could get a pin. And let's face it, these are much cooler to collect. So that can go, uh, that can go in the ever-growing pin collection, three pounds, which means I still have a remaining three pounds of cash at lot what he said, up the all apparently. Um, in case I need to get another can of Coke. No half-time burger for me today. Probably should have bought a little bit more cash. I haven't really dealt with cash since pre-pandemic. I think I'm gonna be getting a, uh, a Waitrose meal deal at the services on the way home. And there you go, we are underway in the second half. We've moved down this end. We can keep a closer eye on this number nine who has been the star man so far. See if we can get some of his shenanigans close up. We're still only about 15 minutes or so into this second half. Again, feels like a Southall goal is coming. There is a corner. You already know who won it. But they're due a goal. The longer this goes on at 1-0 with this level of dominance, the more worry there is they get punished late on. The corners haven't been that effective so far. But 
from open play, they are just relentless. So another free kick in a very dangerous area. Yes! And that, boys and girls, is 2 0. Lovely, lovely, lovely. You're on it now. <laughs> so there's about 20 minutes left, I would guess. 20, 25 minutes left. 2-0 to Southall. Just as I'm saying, the, the set pieces hadn't really been working. They score from one. And we finally catch a goal on camera in this series. We could be breaking all, all, kinds, of, uh, all kinds of curses today. 20 minutes or so left. It's now 2-1. Corner coming from the far side. Just really... Easy, too easy. Um, still 2 1, still very much a goal against the run of play, but there have been a couple of substitutions since the second goal, and it's just taken the edge off a little bit. Fingers crossed we can still see our first win. Final five minutes, it's getting a little uh, tasty out there now, as you can hear. Just had a, an incident a minute ago where the goalkeeper just absolutely clattered into one of their players, did come away with the ball, um, but the uh, opposition player was rolling around on the floor afterwards and now the keeper himself looks like he's hurt himself doing it and then we just have a little bit of shenanigans over here as well. I'm, I'm assuming the keeper is just well aware that there's five minutes left, so he's having a little sit down. Four minutes left apparently according to the linesman. Oh, we've got defensive chaos going on here. The goalkeeper came out, headed the ball straight up in the air and fell over and then somehow won a free kick doing it. <laughs> that was that was shenanigans. But yeah, seeing out another four minutes from here is going to be tough. And they didn't. 2-2. Two -two. It was just a big ball forward. Very similar to what was happening earlier in the match. They got one on one with the keeper and this time just absolutely buried it. And it is 2-2, and Southall do not deserve that at all. But I don't know that they've got the personnel on the pitch now to switch back into a more attacking mentality. They've just made three substitutions, got men behind the ball, got very defensive. I don't know what the plan is from here. Three minutes or so remaining. A winner here, of course, would be spectacular. But it looks like my curse might be continuing. Clubs are gonna, are gonna get to the point where they don't let me in for these matches. And there we have it, full time. That was very, very harsh on Southall, who were the best team for almost the entire match. And uh, just got robbed at the end, tried to see the game out, just couldn't. And uh, yeah, that is, uh, that is a tough one. That is me, three games in, no wins yet. There'll be a replay midweek. Once again, I'm not gonna be able to make it to the replay because I'm off to do my world record attempt at insomnia this week. So can't be coming back down here midweek. But it does mean in two weeks time, we could very well be back down in this part of the world again. Because one of these two teams could conceivably be at home in the next round. And they're only five miles apart. And there we have it. Little bit. A little bit heartbroken. Thought I was going to see my first win. They really did deserve the win as well. They played so well against a team from a higher division. They dominated so much of the match. But I think I said towards the end of the first half, it just felt like they were in control for so long that they needed to capitalise and get a bit more of a cushion. And unfortunately, the cushion was not produced and then just dropping so many men behind the ball and stopping doing the things that have been working so well. They were attacking so well, controlling the game so well, and then just dropping back and trying to see it out, unfortunately, has been the undoing. So it goes to a replay. Obviously, whichever one wins the replay is the team that we follow through to the next round. I think the draw happens on Monday, so we'll know pretty soon where we're going to be. We could very well be back here, or like I say, just five miles down the road uh, in the next round, or uh, we could be somewhere else entirely following whoever ends up winning this replay but oh that one stung a little bit i guess in the great balance of things that's exactly what they did to bearstead in the last round 
So I guess it all balances out eventually. Very sad. But if you have enjoyed that video, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for the rest of the Winner Stays On series and of course the Daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.